Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. And I am meeting you once again with lecture 13 of drama 2, that is modern drama. In our previous lecture, we talked about um, a prevailing situation of modern era and specifically um, situation in the drama Jun Junu and the Peacock by Sean O'Kese, where the writer discusses about the hollowness, nothingness and purposelessness of the situation and how this theme is um, conveyed through each and every activity in the play, whether it's characterization, um, plotting, development of the drama, or the dialogue, the use of language, or um, the, the relationships that these characters develop. Each and everything is emphasizing on this um, major theme that is nothingness, that refers back to the chaotic situation um, developed because of the world wars. Um, as we did discuss in um, one of our early lectures that the, the literature produced in modern times were most of the literature was produced basically between that time um, which was a kind of um, peak of that traumatic, traumatic time. Why? Because it's a time where World War I ends and it's almost the beginning of World War II. So this um, trauma of the situation can easy, easily be seen and felt in the writings by these writers. In the previous lecture, we talked about a theme of nothingness um, and how we are able to understand it by analyzing all of the aspects and putting them together. In today's talk, we are going to explore um, the similar phenomenon. However, um, we will try to see Ocasio's work as a feministic work as well. And when we are analyzing this work for a feministic approach, we'll be discussing two of her um, major female characters, Junu and her daughter, Mary. Um, we'll also be discussing how the language plays its role in this language because we find and we um, observed that the language spoken by the characters is colloquial. Um, it has a great um, impact of um, the language uh, which was being spoken in that time. Why writer brings this language forward, what type of impact it creates. We need to understand this and then we need to um, relate this to our major themes that we have been discussing so far. One very important aspect that will be part of this discussion today is going to be uh, that we will have a kind of very precise writing workshop. Well, you'll be amazed how can I... Uh, make you write when you are just observing me on the screen. Um, in this writing workshop, and I would say workshop come talk, I am going to give you some very helpful tips and techniques and we are going to learn these writing techniques that will help you understand how to compose your answers, whether you are sketching um, character's um, personality or you are uh, sketching or you are putting down your critical reflection on any of the questions related to themes, use of symbolism or any other critical aspect of the drama. Um, we understand that learning literature is not learning any other subject. It is not that you are going to reproduce your knowledge in this um, subject. It is reproduction of the events. However, um, it has to be done with critical reflection on those events. And your understanding has to come um, in front. And the reproduction of the event should come uh, uh, along with that, however, to substantiate your understanding. So, um, in this writing workshop, I'll be discussing how to draw a character sketch and then um, the different steps under that, how to find characteristics in the beginning, then how to find uh, references to substantiate that, how to critically analyze the aspects and then draw conclusions. Um, 
I would like to continue with um, how to compose a critical reflection based of any idea or theme uh, from the play. Um, although I am discussing it um, particularly uh, this writing uh, technique um, aspect uh, when we are doing our um, third play that is Junu and the Peacock by Sean O'Kese. Uh, basically this goes for all types of discussions that we did so far. Um, now knowing that you are done with your sessionals, um, I hope that you would be understanding the need of this workshop because you cannot mug up, you cannot memorize everything and then it is not possible to reproduce everything again. So having this understanding of writing and then writing whatsoever comes up in your assessment is a technique and you, you need to learn it. Once you understand the literature and then you understand the technique of composing your answer, I do not think you'll be left uh, um, alone with this aspect of memorizing literature because that is not a positive habit. Okay, so Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim once again uh, coming back to uh, the uh, topic of discussion that is feministic work of Sean O'Kese. Um, different types of questions can be composed on this idea. However, two most, of, two most frequently asked questions are, O'Kese's women in Junu and, the, Junu and the Peacock are strong and admirable characters. Discuss. And the other question can be, Junu as, is the character that we admire most in Junu and the Peacock. Would you agree with this view? So your, your view is inquired. And then it is said, support your answer by brief reference to the play. References are important. Okay, so uh, let's start our discussion. How do we see the feministic representation in Sean O'Kess's work? Although we have seen this representation in um, Ibsen's work as well, uh, let's see how Junu um, is presented as um, another feministic character. Junu and the Mar Mary Boyles, they both live uh, as mother and da daughter. However, we know that they aren't living a very pleasant life um, in this play. And there are certain reasons behind that. Um, the, their life is separated into three acts which contain a mixture of both tragic and humorous element. Um, we understand this drama as a drama of um, sublime theme. Sublime in a way although it does not bring forward any heroic um, actions on, or or heroes from um, the Greek mythology or heroes and heroines as queens and kings of um, empires. However, uh, the sublimity of the, of the drama lies um, clearly in its depiction of a layman, of a common man as the hero. And we find that Junu and uh, her family is a representation of um, many of the families um, affected by World War I and particularly Irish war in this uh, context. How these families suffered, what different types of suffering, what different types of front they uh, fought on, we need to understand this. and. Understanding this, we can call this play keeping a sublime theme. Um, then secondly, the second most important thing to remind you is of the character. We find these, um, uh, these drama prior to the modern era um, mostly focusing on male characters as heroes, as um, uh, characters, male characters keeping up the uh, responsibility as well as capability of presenting all the goodness of nature. However, Sean O'Kese, like other modern writers, bring women in the uh, foreground and um, gives equal importance to this gender, not as um, uh, as a woman, but also as um, 
uh, in the characters where nature has fitted uh, this gender in as a daughter, as a mother, as a wife. We understand why Okese shows her character as such a magnified, uh, uh, magnified character um, as, a, as a mother because we know that Okese has a background um, behind this relation. Okese's relation with his mother has reflection uh, um, a very clear reflection in this character of Juno. And the third thing that we, I would like to remind you of is the, the combination of two moods in the play, um, tragedy and comedy. Both types of dramas are combined together. You will find tragedy as well as comedy um, um, tracing throughout the drama and the characters and the plot and the development. However, the, the humor is not included in order to um, provide entertainment only or to make it a lighter situation to absorb. It is also included to enhance the tragic effect of the drama. Basically, you will find humor as, as an ironic device being used by the writer. So, moving on with the idea of um, Okese's writing as a feministic um, representation, feministic approach, um, we are going to discuss both of these characters now. Discussing Juno's character. Juno, um, we know, is the wife of Captain Boyle, is the mother of two children who are in constant need of um, attention from her from their mother as well as from their father and basically it's the father uh, who is lacking um, his responsibility uh, understanding of his responsibility um, as the play continues we see this um, um, these children who are deprived of their father's attention um, and we see how this um, this deprived situation is then um, filled by the mother's role then who is playing not only role of a mother but role of a father too and that in the presence of the father. As the play continues this need of attention grows. This attention, need of attention is not from only, only from the uh, children's side, it is from the wife's side as well. Mr. Boyle is compromising not only um, uh, in his responsibility towards um, his children but towards his wife and um, um, towards the household. Um, with the facts of financial difficulties, the pregnancy of Mary, her, her getting into it an illegitimate relation um, and also her son's Johnny's death in the end, we see that somehow, somewhere, all this kind of bad situation, this painful situation, somehow, somewhere links with the kind of attitude being shown and practiced by the, the head of the family, the male head of the family, that is Captain Boyle. Um, okay, so it clearly shows that how then this, uh, coming into this traumatic situation uh, where the family is neglected by the male uh, head of the family, Junu certainly has her work cut out for her as she's not only the, the one person in the family who has a job, who is, the, who is earning, the, earning bread for the family, but also she is the housewife and must render her family by making all the meals, going to buy the groceries, doing any form of house chores and looking after the family in general. So we see how um, the Juno characters is um, ex expanding uh, in, in, into the space of the play, into the space of the plot where uh, both sides of the picture, picture is being shown to the audience. Um, Juno as a character in contrast to the character of Captain Boyle. Captain Boyle is the head of the family, however, he's not playing his role. Now, Juno is the female head of the family, however, she's not only playing her role, she's playing the role of her husband too. 
So, um, um, in, the, in the previous lecture, I discussed how this mirrorism is used in order to um, um, enlarge one aspect. Um, it, it is done brilliantly by um, Sean O'Kesse. So, men's mistake, mistakes are um, um, shown and they are exaggerated um, not only by getting deep into men's character but also showing women's character in contrast um, which, would, which would give you a clear uh, flavor of um, conflict between uh, these genders. Um, for example, um, if we pick some references from the drama, uh, from the dialogues, we find Janu saying, I killing myself walking. I am killing myself by walking. That's what she means. And also she says, your poor wife slaving to keep the bit in your mouth. So it's basically she's saying that I know that I am killing myself by walking. The kind of work I'm doing, the kind of burden I'm carrying, the kind of fronts I'm fighting on, it's not an easy job and she's very well aware. However, she has to do it because she's aware of the reality too. And the reality is that um, there is no option. She has to do it. Then she says, your poor wife, she is in hope of sympathy from her husband who if is not taking care of his responsibilities at least will show some acknowledgement of her services that she's providing to the family. She says, your poor wife, slaving, it's, it's being a slave of work and work day and night to keep the bit in your mouth, to feed you, to make you eat and to make the family eat, I know that I am um, being, I'm living a life of a slave. So, these references show just how hard Junu works to keep her family happy and alive, to let them survive. She has to work to let them survive, basically. Throughout the play, Mr. Boyle's activities, um, um, these are an unending list of um, disregard of uh, Mrs. Boyle's um, services. So, instead of acknowledging her services, Mr. Boyle is spending all of the money whatever Junu earns. So, um, this has made the situation very difficult for the women. She says that um, she finds it very hard to work in a situation where the man is not taking care of his responsibility. Okay, fine, if he's not taking care of his responsibility, the least the women can expect from him is to acknowledge her services, that she's taking care of uh, the responsibilities that the man has to um, take up too. However, not both of these. The third thing is that he is making them suffer by spending all the money that is, that is earned by uh, Mrs. Boyle. Um, and in hope for any decent future for the family whatsoever is brought in by Junu is spent ruthlessly, is spent um, by Mr. Boyle uh, without understanding that how hard this is on Mrs. Boyle's shoulders. Um, and what kind of activity he spends this money in? He is a person who is alcoholic and he goes and visits local pubs um, every day, rather all the time. So, therefore, Junu cannot afford any type of luxuries for herself, as she definitely does deserve it. Now, the, the attitude, the kind of attitude that Mr. Boyle is keeping up as a male head of the family is shown not the way he is taking care of his family, but how Junu takes care of her family as well. It is shown that Junu is a hard worker. She works hard, she works day and night, and she earns the bread. This bread is eaten by um, Mr. Boyle um, in, t in, in, in terms of in taking in alcohol and visiting pu public pubs. Um, and Junu, who basically deserves some kind of luxury, some kind of peace in her life because he's working hard, is not left with anything at all. I would say with not sufficient amount of money to feed her family in peace.
So, the poverty is evident. Um, in Junu's comment to Mr. Boyle, let's see what she says. She says, eat your breakfast. It may be the last you will get for I don't know where the next one is going to come for. Uh, um, if you um, go back and read this dialogue and the background of this dialogue, you'll find this quite a funny situation where Mrs. Boyle puts in front the breakfast and um, asks Mr. Boyle to eat it. It's, it's just a funny act that is done by the characters. However, the irony inside um, the dialogues can be felt. And she says that, eat it, because I don't know whether you'll be able to get the next one, because I don't know where it will come from, because I do not have any hope left. Because each day she has to start from a scratch and build up to the point where she can earn some food for her family. And it's not that she's hiding it. She's continuously conveying it to Mr. Boyle in the hope that he may recognize and understand his responsibilities. But even this will not cause concern for Junu's principles. When we learn that Junu is against trade unions, when the employer sacrifices one victim, the trade unions go and better be sacrificing a hundred. And in all, this, in all this chaotic situation, in these circumstances, we find Junu a uh, a character who lives in reality, who does not live, uh, who does not like living in fantasies, and who believes in that principles are made for human beings. Human beings are not made for principles. So if you have to change a principle, change it. Don't make it a, a point of your life and death. And how does she respond to it when Mary says that our principles are principle, but Juno stays realistic? and thinks, well, it's all good and well, having principles is of no use, is of no good if you can't afford them. I can't afford to be, um, I can't afford to pretend to be a good woman when I am not. Well, um, so she's the one who seems to keep the family as a unit. And this is evidently shown when Junu says, I don't know what any of yous um, and do without your mom. Well, and we find Juno continuously making everyone aware of her presence in the situation. Like telling everybody, if I would have not been there, I do not know what kind of situation you would be in. And this is what she's saying again in these dialogues. So Juno's character is not speaking uh, only um, showing the other characters, but speaking for her own character as well by Okese. Juno is a well-respected member of the family and might even be superior to Mr. Boyle and Joxer, a family friend. We know Joxer is a family friend who somehow is, um, um, is always held responsible for Mr. Boyle's um, insensible attitude. Because when the pair is talking on page 9, Mr. Boyle enters and both are said to be stupefied. They both are considered stupefied, they both are considered stupid, and they both are called stupid in the play. So somehow we see that Okese in black and white states that somehow Juno's characters is superior than of Mr. Boyle's. Then we find when she suffers um, uh, a situation, um, when she offers him, her husband, an egg, and he makes the excuse that he's in a desperate hurry. This may be because he does not want to spend much time there with Juno. We find that it's not only that he is showing irresponsibility towards the needs of the family. Look at the way she, he's behaving with her wife. That. Um, he knows that his, uh, his wife is feeding um, him and feeding him no, uh, no one knows at the cost of what. However, at still he is not willing to give her any time. Um, and there can be reasons behind because he knows if he'll be sitting there, his wife will be somehow cursing him again for his attitude. So he is running from the situation. He is running from the reality. Instead of working it out instead of solving this, sh this issue and problem, this escapism can be seen in Mr. Boyle's character. 
also the fact that Mr. Boy lies about the fact he was drinking may indicate he was scared of Chunu's reaction if he had have told the truth. But later on in the same page, we see that Chunu will take no nonsense from her. That's a very interesting situation presented by the writer. At one point, we find that Junu is um, inquiring her husband if he uh, lately had been drinking. And we find that um, Mr. Um, Boyle, uh, he hasn't been drinking. However, he says that he, he did. And then we find out the reason that he is not willing to um, let um, his wife take this feeling that he stopped drinking somehow or he could not drink because he was afraid of her, um, her scolding. So uh, we find an other aspect brought in the front light by the writer where he's showing how egoistic this gender is. Um, um, understanding what kind of situation they are in, understanding them to be people of ideas, understanding them to be um, people of no use, who are escapist as well. However, at the same time, they keep big egos. Um, but at the, at, the, at the same point, we are told that Junu is the kind of character who will take no nonsense from her husband when he says he doesn't want any food and she just says nobody's going to cox you don't think that so she is stating her will clearly in black and white this suggests that she's a strong person she's not a weak person and if she doesn't take nonsense from her husband she won't take any nonsense from anyone else so basically when we are trying to understand how Okese presents um, female gender in his work, we find that he is um, uh, collecting all the positive aspects in, uh, in this gender and showing this gender as a strong, real um, aspect of the, um, of the household situation. Okay, moving on. If we um, consider Johnny, uh, Johnny's situation as uh, Junu's son, let's see how we find women over here. Johnny is a man who relies on a woman to bring him all that he needs, displaying men to be controversially the weaker gender. So now we are discussing how the genders are discriminated in this play, showing one uh, that is traditionally weaker, however shown stronger, and showing other that is traditionally stronger, however shown weaker uh, in the play. So uh, we are analyzing this aspect of strong and weak uh, genders by exploring into different phenomena. Uh, we see that how Juno is taking care of the responsibilities that uh, Mr. Boyle um, has to take care of. How, Jun how Johnny, Juno's son, who apparently shows uh, a kind of um, a boy who would like to join some army or some fighting party, and knowing and showing himself as brave and, um, um, you know, very chivalric and uh, kind of person who would like to secure people, uh, needy pe people in need, is basically depending on his own mother all the time, even to fetch him a glass of water. So, um, he uses his sickness to demand Junu to bring him glasses of water when he could have easily fetched one himself. So, um, this situation, this analysis will let you understand how both genders are represented here. Not, not the female characters are represented as female characters, but they are their character their characters are enhanced when they are put in contrast with the male characters in the play. Um, even worse though is that he is generally very bad tempered towards his mother. We are talking about Johnny here. Um, just like his father, um, what is expected from Johnny is that at least he would understand the services of his mother and he would um, pay regard to them and he will respect them. We find him a very ill-tempered, bad-tempered man just like his father who constantly asking her, her, his mother to do things for him. 
and for that he would present any lame excuse, um, which wears Junu down and makes her irritable and ensures that she is nearly always in a bad frame of mind. Now, we are seeing some of the negative things um, portrayed here in Junu's character, and one is her bad mood. We find this character in bad mood all the time. However, now when we analyze what would make her uh, to be in bad mood all the time, one reason is Johnny's behavior towards um, his mother. However, she's never in this state unless annoyed by a family member. So we see that the reason behind her bad mood is basically that she gets annoyed for one or the other thing done by her family members. So she has her causes for being in bad moods, whereas Mr. Boyle has none whatsoever. However, still he'll be in bad mood all the time. Okay, then she speaks out to Johnny's complaining. It is with fervent remonstrance, remonstrance she cries, Who has kept them, um, the house together for the past few years? Only me. So she knows that she's the character who has been keeping the house together um, for past years. And who will have to bear the biggest power on this trouble but me? So... The, all the troubles are for this one character. But within an uh, winging isn't going to be any good. So she knows that she's not going to be rewarded um, in any way for this uh, act of kindness that she's doing to the family. This point is typically of the way Juno reacts to and deals with sufferings of life. Okay. Juno knows that what is important in life and when Johnny talks about his principles I would do it again ma for our principles are principles that's who's speaking here Mary's speaking here to which Juno replies ah you lost your best principles my boy when you lost your arm then the only sort of principles that's any good to a working man so you have already given uh, away your best that you could do and that was your principle that's what Junu says and replies to Johnny's dialogue when he's being consistent on principles a principle is a principle so this shows she thinks that fighting for your country and getting getting injured or dying isn't going to solve any problem or solve anything at all but bring more grief and more work for the ones who are left behind. Juno's outlook on life is ultimately more important than the others. And we find her here speaking Ocasio's thought. We find her to be a person who dislikes war. She has not lost in principles like her children, but she acknowledges what's going on in the world around her, which may be the fact of the poverty they live in and the restrictions because of this uh, and also her family which she cares for so much. She knows that whatsoever is happening what are the reasons behind but just for the reasons she cannot live in a in a in a um, world of denial. She has to live in reality and she has to fight back. She knows that too very well. So we discussed Junu's character as a representation of female characters in Okese's work. Let's see how Okese brings Mary's character in front as another representation of female uh, gender. Mary seems like a confident girl who knows that she's doing all the time, um, but when Bentham decides to leave her, she loses this spirit. Before this, Mary was trying to better herself by and lift herself out of her surroundings and the environment by studying books. This is shown when she talks about her principles and wants to belong in the upper class, but feels where she lives may be degrading her. We find Mary's character a very positive character in the beginning. 
So there is there is, there can be a comparison between both of these characters as well, Mary's character and Junu's character. How Junu's character is developed throughout the story, and how uh, we see Junu getting stronger and stronger uh, with the kind of suffering she receives in, in the course of um, the development of the plot. And in the end, she emerges to be the strongest character in the play. However, we find Mary's character, although very positive in the beginning, but how the character develops, the character develops into a uh, shallow being towards the end. Um, she was, al she was always willing to be challenged for example, trying to better herself and becoming fully independent towards the end. We find that in the beginning she is shown as a positive character, um, however, and she is also shown some confident and, and strong character, but in the beginning she is um, um, kind of a um, dwindling character who is getting weak who, who is getting weak by the passage of time but in the end again when she gets strong sense of reality and when she accepts reality she becomes an other strong independent character mary also becomes very much like her mother as the play proceeds and we see mary's other side the side who works and it is shown that her mother and she, ha they, she have, both, both of them, they have been brought closer together throughout the story. She now confides in her mother and this is shown at the end when she talks to Junu about Jerry. It is significant that Mary is reading Ibsen's plays when we, ha we have also read Ibsen's play. So if somebody is reading Ibsen's plays, not because um, they are part of their course uh, textbooks, but as a um, novel to be read in, lo in your leisures. That means you like Ibsen's work. And when you r r like um, writings of a writer like Ibsen, that means you would want to be one like them. As they are realistic and unromantic, which is similar to this play, but contrast with her life generally. Mary is shown as an admirable person because of these spirits and these points, but she's not tot totally sensible because she buys all sorts of luxuries with the money. So we do find this female representation as a kind of um, female who is not all positive, who, who would like to, who would present negative attributes attached to her character. However, we see reasons for them. So we find that um, Okese himself is quite, quite a realistic writer who does not only show the positive sides of the picture, however, also throw equal light on negative attributes. And then, and, and that by telling the reasons behind them. So he um, is trying not to be unjust uh, in his uh, dealing with the characters belonging different genders. Religion in Ireland was a very important thing. Um, we know that religion is one of the themes of the play as well. And Mary and her family, they were Catholic. Having illegitimate relation before marriage was a sin in the eyes of a Catholic. So Mary was seen as a fallen woman in her culture, a woman who was de degraded, who was disgraced. And Jerry Devine is one of the people who criticizes her for this. My God, Mary, have you fallen as low as that? So that is how people are talking against Mary. He says when finding out she has conceived a child, an illegitimate child, as would any man in 1922 if they met a woman with an illegitimate uh, bond of relation. Throughout Junu and the Peacock, Junu is linked to the Virgin Mary. The Virgin Mary is an archetypical mother figure. Okese links Junu to the Virgin Mary, especially with reference to her relationship with Johnny. The link is strengthened when at the end of the play, Johnny is murdered, just like the Virgin Mary's son. Additionally, Okese gives Junu the same name as the Roman goddesses, wife of Jupiter, king of the gods. So throughout the entire play, she battles against poverty, ignorance, laziness and deceit, 
all to keep her family from disintegrating. The dictionary definition of the word heroine is a character with the attributes of a hero. So, we expect our heroines to um, understand more than those around her and with this in mind one can find Junu a reflection of the same idea, a heroine. So, going back to our question, how Okese presents her female characters in the play? He presents them as heroes. So, make it right, he presents them as heroines. So, this was our discussion um, regarding the female representation in the play. Now, let's move on and see um, how Okese brings forward this use of colloquial language in the play and what kind of impact it creates. So, exploration of language in Junu and the Peacock is the next topic we are addressing. Um, most of Junu and the, pe and, the, and the Peacock's realism comes from its accuracy of speech. What do we mean by accuracy of speech when we find it quite faulty and quite, quite hard on our sense of hearing and listening? Um, it's Dublin intentions unerringly gain a reality of setting and of character. Even features that have an, express, an expressly dramatic purpose like repetition, rhetoric, lyrical or biblical passages fall easily on the ear in natural spoken rhythms. So, language plays a big part in this play in the quick changes of pace, mood, characterization of the play and strengthens both its comedy and its tragedy. Um, so, let us have some references from the play. These are simply funny mis mispronunciations by Captain Jack Boyle um, that bring comedy to the play. You will find Captain Jack speaking um, words um, and mispronouncing them most of the time, showing um, the way um, an ignorant, ignorant man would be. At times he would like to um, show himself as a sailor. So you would find the, the, the tinge of the flavor of that character in his, in his speech as well. Um, then you find Maisie's character using casual lyricism in her talk. You, f you will find Mrs. Tancred's bitter balanced um, allergy for her son all against the general background of quick-witted idiomatic um, reparty full of imagery and fantasy. And then the characters manipulate their own speech for effect. Captain Boyle's call for his drink, a wet, a jar, a bowl. So you will find this uh, adding into his character some kind of um, uh, detailing in the character is done by the speech activity. Um, now, how, how the, the, these characters create comic situations? Comedy of language and articulation. It deals with language and its articulation. When we say that comedy has been created by language, it is created by the word play, by using different types of word. At times, they're creating pun. At times, they are used in some particular meaning. However, they keep another uh, understanding. At times, they're used as ironic um, a device of irony. The comic catch phrases, um, a darling man, a darling man, a darling thing, a bowl, um, and you know, th these kind of catchy phrases by particular characters will create an air of um, comedy. Then articulation of these particular aspects, um, the cumulative comedy of repetition by repeating a darling thing, a darling thing. So by repeating one thing again and again, the comedy is created. Then the dialect and the and pronunciation of the words again create um, uh, adds into the uh, comic situation of the play. Now what are these rhetorical devices that which are being used here? Um, the rhetoric is created through uh, the pompous phrases of ludicrous descriptions, inflations and deflations both are comic, the inflation and deflation of prices, singing of the characters 
and then exaggeration by exaggerating about the things this brings a lot a lot of comedy in the situation um, so this was a kind of um, verbal um, comedy that was produced in the play um, there is also comedy of pompous phrases of ridiculous description by the characters the way they are describing things the way we find Mr. Boyle describing the um, the inflation in, in prices inflation in money uh, both are comic the way the characters ex exaggerate whether they are exaggerating about the good things of uh, or, or of the bad things we find how um, the character of Mr. Boyle and Johnny they exaggerate on the pains and disease they have and how do they exaggerate the goodness of something or the badness of something so these are rhetoric rhetorical devices the linguistic aspects of the play that okay say brings in use um, to create the comic uh, situation in the play however that is to enhance the tragic effect of the drama Boyle uh, one very interesting fact that I am going to discuss with you is that um, you might have noticed that Boyle himself himself knows that he is mispronouncing words at times and then he himself explains the reason why would he do so um, he says that he knows the correct form but the wrong one sounds better in the story how he says it to Joxer it blowed and it blowed blue is the right word Joxer but blowed is what the sailors use so what he's in a sailor's character he would like his speech to be like sailor's speech so so far we discussed how okay says um, presents her feministic approach in his writing and how does he use language varieties dialects and linguistic linguistic aspects to uh, to add details into his characters moving on to the writing workshop that I talked about how do we do critical analysis and how do we compose our analysis as um, a reflection or an answer so when we are understanding um, this process we will try to um, start with the very first aspect that is finding the characters, characteristics and then quoting references analyzing them critically and draw, drawing conclusion um, starting with this writing workshop we will, we, we, we will try to address uh, two of these questions one of designing a character sketch and second is of exploring or uh, composing any kind of critical reflection this one can be uh, explor uh, exploration of language in Juno and the Peacock as I just discussed so how do we analyze let's see if we are analyzing Mary Boyle's character and we are asked to draw a character sketch of Mary Boyle how can we do it um, for that first we need to be thorough uh, in our reading uh, for this character we have I assume that we have finished the drama we read it twice or thrice and we completely understand the character now as far as understanding is concerned we understand it very well and that is why we are able to interpret and form our opinion regarding this character so we know that Mary is um, first introduced reading from a newspaper about the um, gruesome deaths of the victims of an um, ambush she has two forces in her mind one through the circumstances of her life pulling her back the other through the influence of the books she has read pushing her forward so that is the kind of character that is revealed in the very beginning okay um, so when we are done with our reading I hope when you are reading a drama whenever you read a dialogue that brings um, out a kind of characteristics of belonging to character for example if there is a dialogue written that shows that Mary is a kind of independent girl you will mark that uh, dialogue and will write somewhere that this is a reference to her independent um, you know um, very confident nature so if I do it this way I would like to collect all my references in the end to see how many characteristics I could find about Mary's character let's suppose that we have been able to 
find um, these uh, characteristics that you can see in, um, on the screen. And what I did here, I tried to divide these characteristics because I just discussed that we see a kind of development in Mary's character that is not a smooth development. We find a kind of decrease and then increase, a kind of, um, you know, um, uh, negativity and then the positivity. So I tried to find these characteristics accordingly and divided them into two columns, one of our positive or the, the attributes that she possessed in the beginning or, and the attributes she possessed in the end. So in the beginning you can see she is shown as an independent character, she believes in solidarity so because she takes up a strike and she tries to lift herself through reading um, uh, realist plays like of Ibsen's where characters escape conventions She's a hard worker, she's a sharp-tongued girl, she enjoys dressing up and buying luxuries. Here she has a link to Juno. Um, she's a strong maternal, uh, she has strong maternal instincts. She's productive towards her mother and she shares Jerry's ideals about uh, trade unions. However, in the end of the play we find some other attributes of her personality. Um, when she's le let down by um, cowardic Bentham, she turns out to be um, a kind of um, girl who, would lo who will not have enough confidence. When she's let down by Jerry she re and rejects her when he discovers she's pregnant, she loses again her confidence. She becomes a passive character, she becomes dependent, she becomes very sentimental, she loses her spirit and she accepts Juno's plans for the future instead of making her own. So we have almost 10 to 15 um, different uh, aspects of her personality jotted down here. So that is the very first step that you need to do when you are going to draw a character sketch please make sure that you need to have a thorough understanding of the character in the first place. And that can only be done when you would give your literature, give your drama two, three readings. You read it once, uh, read it as a play, uh, a text of your course. The second time, you make it your bad book. Lie down on your back and uh, bed and read it with a relaxed mind and enjoy the story. However, third time when you read it, Keep a pen or marker or color in your hand that will help you draw uh, underlying dialogues or uh, draw some kind of sketch or mark it somehow that tells you this dialogue goes to describe this character. So you can keep different colors for different characters and uh, you can keep colors in association with the type of characters you are um, planning for. Uh, for example, for Junu, who is, uh, who is a major character of the story, you can keep red color. So, for Mary, uh, because she is one like Junu ca Junu's character, you can keep orange color. So, all the characteristics that would describe uh, Mary's character are marked, dialogues are marked with orange color or you can write it down, this dialogue depicts that she is a, you know, passive character or she is a sentimental character. So in the end you have list of all those characteristics and uh, you have ref list of those references from the drama that would substantiate add weightage into, if you say she is a sentimental character, you can present that dialogue that makes you think that yes, she is a sentimental character. Using these findings as your character map, find quotations, dialogues that can be used as evidence in an essay for as many of the aforementioned as possible. So only writing that she seems to be a sentimental character towards the end will not suffice, will not be sufficient, will not be enough. You have to provide an evidence what makes you think that she has become a kind of sentimental character. And that can only be done when you bring something out of drama, quote something from the drama. Okay, either I take one characteristic and compose one paragraph on it. That is one way of doing it because we know when we do paragraph writing, uh, only one idea is uh, 
preferably discussed in one paragraph where a paragraph has a sentence line, a theme line, subject line where the, this, the idea is disclosed. The body discusses the illustration or the explanation or the further discussion on the main idea and the ending, the last line is uh, not only concluding the idea that has been discussed in the paragraph but also links it with the upcoming paragraph. This is one way of doing it and that will make it so many paragraphs, probably 15 to 20 paragraphs if you are discussing one characteristics in uh, um, one aspect of the personality in one paragraph. But this can be made shorter. What we can do here is that we can characterize these attributes. Let's say if I want to bring four or five of attributes into one big category and then that big category is discussed as one paragraph and all the re related attributes are discussed in that paragraph. This will help me to make these 15, let's say, aspects into maybe five of the paragraphs. So the second step is to categorize attributes and see how many of them can be put together and do not take more than three to five attributes because then it becomes difficult handling them. So categorizing techniques is, technique is the second uh, step that we are taking. What we are doing, we are categorizing. Let's say um, she is an independent character, she is hard working and she has a sharp tongued tongue. Um, so this sharp tongue does not fit in the uh, uh, independent and hard working aspect of her personality. So we take both of them together, the independent and hard working aspect of her personality. So um, I somehow categorize these for you. Um, we see independent and hard working self of Mary as persona of her identification and then uh, believes, she believes in solidarity, um, she shares Jerry's ideas, she um, wants to escape convention, uh, conventional characters, that's her idealism, she enjoys dressing up, motherly instincts that she has, a mother's reflection, so on and so forth. So what you can do is that you can make um, you can categorize these attributes and give them headers as I have given them under the quality column. Okay, so let's say now it, it is time to discuss the very first category that we made of her independent and hard working self. How can we discuss it? Um, this is one model paragraph that you can see here. Mary presents role of confident, hard working and independent girl who knows that what she is doing all the time. Uh, so the very first sentence opens up the idea this can be taken as the subject line that discusses um, what is going to be detailed in the paragraph. In the beginning, Mary tries to better herself and lift herself out of her surroundings environment. This is shown when she talks about her principles and wants to belong in the upper class, so on and so forth. So in the coming lines of the paragraph, you have to develop the body and you have to add in references from the uh, from the story to substantiate for all those attributes you mentioned in the first line. That would tell she's confident, that would tell she's hardworking, that would tell she's an independent girl. This will make the body of the paragraph. And the last line, last sentence, she was always willing to be challenged, for example, trying to better herself and becoming fully independent towards the end would be kind of reinforcement of what you have said in the paragraph. So that is how you can compose all of your paragraphs and then all together this will become a kind of um, basically a become um, character sketch of the character you are trying to um, sketch as the model. So um, by separately organizing your paragraphs now you can compose your um, sketch of a character. How you can do this composition? How can you structure your composition? Let's see. First by giving your topic sentence, introducing, introduce the topic you will be discussing in this paragraph, then by analyzing, give your analysis, um, examine and explain what the writer or dramatist has achieved. And then by 
giving a quotation, a reference, back up the above with a quotation from the drama and then summarizing in the end, in the last sentence of the paragraph, summarize the above quotation and what it shows and what you wanted to discuss in this paragraph. That this is how you can compose a character sketch um, easily and this will be kind of um, wonderful composition. So what we discussed in today's talk, we discussed the feministic work of Okese in Junu and the Peacock, where we discussed both female representation, Junu and Mary in the play. We discussed how um, linguistic aspect has been uh, um, has been used by the writer to detail, do the detailing of the character and what kind of impact they create. Then we understood how we can compose a character sketch and what kind of techniques can be used in order to compose a good character sketch. So um, this was all for today's lecture. Um, in the next talk, we'll be able to have a conclusive talk on Junu and the Peacock and we will be able to start our next play that is Waiting for Godot by Samuel Bucket. Till then, Allah Hafiz.